Greetings, wizards. Welcome to the Papercraft Wizard Channel. My name is Kelly, and I appreciate you being here for our Mermaid Purse tutorial. In this video, we'll be using the Make a Splash collection by Graphic45 that I purchased through Scrap and Create. If you enjoy watching this video, please remember to subscribe, thumbs up, and ring that bell. We will begin by creating an embellishment for the front of the purse. I'm using a piece of low tack mint tape to temporarily adhere my image onto a scrap piece of chipboard. I'm going to use glossy accents to cover the entire image. The best tip I have for working with glossy accents is to try to avoid air bubbles by not shaking the bottle and also squeezing out some of the air before you begin to lay down the glossy accents. I'm going to completely cover the image and then set it aside to dry. You may have noticed in the walkthrough that I used a circular image on the front of the purse, but this is the original image I had created and decided that a circle might look better. Here we have two pieces of our base cardstock, and these pieces measure 8 inches by 4 inches. We are going to score these at half inch on all four sides. Here we have a piece of base cardstock at 10 inches by 8 inches. We're going to score this at half inch on all four sides. Now let's trim off the corners of our 8x4 pieces to give the little tabs that we created with our score lines a mitered edge. going to fold the cardstock at one of the four inch ends and we're going to secure that tab with some adhesive. We'll do this for both pieces. I'm using art glitter glue to adhere those tabs. This will give us more of a finished look for the top edge of the opening of our purse.
right about here, I'm realizing I forgot the last score line on this piece of cardstock. I did go back and put that line in there and alter it, but I did it off screen and um, did not record it. So my apologies for that. But know that this piece should be scored on all four sides. I'm using art glitter glue to adhere these tabs. Please note I'm adhering the sides here and I'm not adhering the bottom tab. Bottom tab will be used to adhere this panel to the purse. However, you should have a top tab that you will adhere. we have some seven inch by three inch faux suede and I'm going to adhere that to our eight by four inch panel. I'm using art glitter glue to adhere that faux suede to the panel. I'm only applying a small amount to part of the cardstock. This will make it easier to position the suede before fully adhering it to the panel. I'm taking my time to ensure that the suede is in the proper place. And then I'll go ahead and adhere the rest of the suede to the panel. Now we'll flip over our panels and we'll adhere our decorative cardstock to the back side of the panels. Decorative cardstock is cut to 6 and 15 sixteenths by 2 and 15 sixteenths, giving us a nice snug fit on the inside of that panel. These pieces of decorative cardstock were cut from the 8 by 8 signature page and cut to size. If you're enjoying this video and would like to see more, please subscribe, thumbs up, and ring that bell.
I'll use my bone folder to fold the tabs at the score lines in towards the images. I'll apply some Tim Holtz Distress Glaze on all of the decorative cardstock in this project. I'm using a Ranger ink applicator with dome foam, but any applicator will do. This will add a little bit of durability to our paper. Got a little bit of the glaze on the base cardstock. So we do want to try to avoid that. It will dry, I just don't want it to interfere with the gluing process. Other than that, I'm just verifying that I have covered the entire image. Here I have a piece of cardstock measuring 10 and a half inches by 10 inches. I'll score this cardstock on the 10 inch side at half an inch and nine and a half inches, and on the 10 and a half inch side at half an inch and seven and a half inches. I'm mitering the edges of all of our tabs. I'm trimming off the tabs here at the bottom of the three inch portion.
I'm using my bone folder to help me fold those tabs at the score lines. We'll use some art glitter glue to adhere the tabs. Purpose of these tabs is to give our project a more finished look. we have a decorative piece of cardstock and this cardstock measures 8 and 15 sixteenths by 6 and 15 sixteenths. I'll go ahead and ink up those edges for a finished look and then we'll use our art glitter glue to adhere this decorative cardstock to our base cardstock. And I'll use my bone folder to make sure that this cardstock is nice and secure. Art glitter glue does dry clear, but I do like to remove any large glops that seep out from the edges of the decorative cardstock. Now we'll adhere our back panel to the bottom of our front and bottom panel. We want to make sure that we get this lined up nice and straight. Once I have it in place, I use my bone folder to make sure it's nice and secure. I'm going to mark this side panel center and half of an inch down and this will be the spot where we make an eighth inch hole punch and we'll attach 
our D-ring rivet for our handle. Set the crocodile to 8 inch hole punch. We'll punch the hole on both pieces. Here are the side panels at each side of the purse. We'll adhere the 9 inch by 5 inch piece of faux suede over the bottom of the purse. We want to leave about an inch on each side and we'll adhere that up over the bottom part of the back and front panels. I'll use my bone folder to make sure that that's nice and secure. Now I'll take an 8 and 7 8 inch by 2 and 15 16 inch piece of chipboard and dry fit that into the bottom inside of the purse. Once I'm satisfied with the fit, I'll adhere the chipboard to the bottom of the purse with art glitter glue.
I ensure I have my chipboard in the correct place by folding up the front, back, and side panels. And I'll use my bone folder to make sure I have it nice and secure. I'll mark all four corners at half inch in, and this is where we'll put an eighth inch hole for the feet of our purse. I have my crocodile set to 8 inch hole punch and I'll punch all four holes. have a piece of faux suede measuring nine inches by one and a half inches and a piece of decorative cardstock measuring eight inches by a half inch and I rounded the corners of the decorative cardstock. I'll use art glitter glue to adhere the decorative cardstock to the center of the faux suede. Now we'll add adhesive to the back side of the decorative cardstock and fold the faux suede in to the center of that decorative cardstock. This will be part of the handle of our purse. measuring the inside corners of the faux suede. This will make it easier to fold this portion of the handle up and rivet it in place.
I'm folding the faux suede up about a half an inch. And now we'll add an eighth inch hole punch over that piece we just folded in half. I didn't add the D-ring in before pressing the rivet because it does have that detachable bar that screws in. However, when I do the other side, I do add it in first because it was a little bit more difficult getting that bar in through the suede than I thought it was going to be. I'm using my new rivet press to press the rivet, but you can also do this with the rivet dies that they include in most rivet sets and a hammer. Uh, for me, that's just a little bit too difficult and I can't get it to work, so I went ahead and opted for the rivet press. I have a link in the description below, but if you don't rivet often, I recommend using another method. I've also used my Quapa dial to press rivets, though that's not what it's intended for and it doesn't have the exact same result. The D-ring set I purchased came with this screwdriver. We'll do the same thing to the other side of the faux suede. First chain comes in one piece. I'll split it in half using jewelry pliers. I'll add half of the chain to each of the D-rings attached to the faux suede. This will complete our handle.
Here is our handle with an equal amount of chain on each side. Let's make our belt and buckle. We'll begin with a piece of faux suede measuring seven inches by one and a quarter inches and a piece of decorative cardstock with six and 15 sixteenths and one and three sixteenths inches. I'm using my corner punch to round the edges of the decorative cardstock and adhering that decorative cardstock onto the faux suede. I'm using my scissors to round the corners of the faux suede. Here, I'll mark the three places where I'll punch holes for the eyelids. I'll make my first mark at one and one quarters inch. I'll make my next two marks with three quarters of an inch spacing. I'm making a fourth mark half inch in on the other side. I'll use my crocodile set at 1 8 inch and I'll punch the hole on the side with only one mark. Now I've set my crocodile to 3 16 inch hole punch and I will punch out the three holes on the opposite side. ready to insert our eyelids and use the crocodile to secure them. punching an eighth inch hole one half inch in and centered on the back of the purse. I'm adding some art glitter glue to the end of our belt 
the end that has the eighth inch hole and I'll adhere that over where we just punched our hole in the back of the purse. I'll insert the rivet and use the rivet press, press the rivet in place. Now we'll start on the buckle configuration. I'm using a six inch by one and a quarter inch piece of faux suede and a three and fifteen sixteenths by a one and three sixteenths inch piece of decorative cardstock. I'm adhering the decorative cardstock piece to one end of the faux suede on the felt side. I have the faux suede folded in half. On the end with the rounded corners, I'm going to make a mark about one half inch in. I'm marking the other end right at the center on the edge. I set my crocodile to 3 16 inches and I'll make two hole punches right at the folded end of the suede for the buckle to slide into. Set the crocodile to 8 inch hole punch and punch the side that has the rounded corners. I'm using my scissors to clean up the edges of our slot. And now we can add in the metal buckle piece. To ensure the buckle stays in place, I'm adding an additional eighth inch hole punch near the metal buckle piece. Uh, 
got a little ahead of myself here when I started adhering the suede to the cardstock to complete the buckle and almost forgot the half inch by two and a half inch piece that we use as our belt loop. For the placement of the belt loop, I have mine a little high on our buckle configuration. The, my recommendation would be to actually move that a little bit closer to the end with the rounded corners. I have my crocodile set to eighth inch hole punch. I'm punching the eighth inch hole center on the front of the purse and about two and a half inches from the bottom. I'm adding some art glitter glue to the back of the belt configuration. I'll insert the rivet into the buckle configuration and add that to the front of the purse. Here I'm checking to make sure that everything lines up. I'm using the crocodile set to eighth inch hole punch to punch our second rivet hole through the purse. And I'm going to use my crocodile to set that rivet in place. This isn't actually what the crocodile is intended to do, but my rivet press doesn't fit all the way uh, to that rivet. And the crocodile can do it. Uh, it might dent your rivet a little bit on the top side and on the bottom, it really dents it, but that bottom rivet's gonna be hidden. So I'm going to go ahead and use this tool uh, in this way, even though this is not how it's meant to be used. Our belt and buckle are now complete. Take our second piece of 8 and 7 eighths by 2 and 15 16 inch chipboard and we're going to add our 4.5 inch by 10.5 inch piece of velvet on top of that. I'll use double sided tape and this super nifty tear tape tool that was gifted to me by Scrap and Create.
Once we have the release paper off of our tape, we'll go ahead and add our velvet. We want to smooth the velvet out to reduce the risk of wrinkles. And we want to make sure that our chipboard is centered right on top of the velvet. begin by taking off the release paper, but on second thought, it would probably be better to miter the edges of the velvet before taking off the release paper. I'm using my scissors to miter the edges of the velvet. Once the corners are mitered, I'll go ahead and wrap that velvet around the back of our chipboard piece. I'm going to use four Pim Holtz hitch fasteners for the feet of the purse. I'm inserting the hitch fasteners into the holes that we created at the bottom of the purse and screwing them in. Once all four hitch fasteners are in, I'll use some E6000 glue to adhere our chipboard that we covered with velvet to the bottom of our purse.
Now we'll take our velvet that's 10 and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And we're going to adhere that to our chipboard. It's eight and seven eighths inches by six and three quarter inches. First, I'll go ahead and dry fit the chipboard to make sure it sits where we'd like it to. I'll add score tape to the front of our chipboard piece. On the back of our chipboard piece, we'll add score tape just around the edges. Once we remove the release paper, we can add our velvet to the front of our chipboard piece. I didn't learn the first time, and here I am removing the release paper prior to mitering the edges of the velvet. Now that I have my corners mitered, I'll go ahead and fold up that velvet and adhere it to the back of the chipboard panel. I'll trim off any bulk in the velvet with my scissors to ensure that the panel will adhere to the purse properly. I'm using E6000 as the adhesive to adhere this panel to the purse.
We'll do the same thing for our other identical panel. The third time's the charm, and I miter my corners before removing the release paper.
I will add our D-ring rivets to the sides of our purse. If you haven't yet, now's a good time to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And now I'll attach our purse handle to our D-ring rivet. I created this keychain with some supplies from my stash. If you're interested in seeing how I made the keychain, let me know in the comments below. I made the round embellishment on the front the same way I made the rectangular one the beginning of the video. Behind it, I used a piece of the base cardstock. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting, wizards!